on the outside who like to be helpful. Uh, there are some things that, uh, there are some pieces of infrastructure that one might suggest are perhaps missing that are present for um, the members of Congress who are not particularly progressive on a number of fronts. So for example, for Republicans, if they need talking points, policy analysis, information about legislation, the Heritage Foundation apparently does a fantastic job of providing them with that information. Um, if you are a blue dog uh, in the U.S. House of Representatives and you need talking points, um, Third Way does a great job of providing really compelling, poll-tested, blue dog talking points. Um, for the people who are in uh, organizations that might be able to provide those kinds of resources, information, talking points, that sort of thing, um, you know, if you are Marcy Mueller, who's a water uh, at Fire Dog Lake, who does tremendous analysis of a lot of national security stuff. What's an effective way for somebody like that, or for an organization that creates similar information, to get that information to you so that you can actually use it? Isn't that your job? <laughs> <laughs> has been doing, but also what other organizations have done that has worked. I mean, when, on those occasions in which people have gotten useful information, how has that worked? It seems like it does have a prior relationship with the person. I mean, it's so personal, um, what we do on the Hill, and again, the trust thing, you go to the people you trust. So, you know, I have a really good friend with the Kirk, so during the clean elections, uh, not clean elections, the Disclose Act, when I needed information, I just went directly to her, and it came to me and I trusted it. Uh, if I need information on something that I have no idea to do, who to turn to, luckily I now have Darcy who I've been turning to, I think I just asked him for some talking points on the economy on Friday or Thursday. Um, and to be clear, when Amy sends me a request, the usual thing that I do is not make things up. Tempting though that is at times. Uh, but a lot of what I've been trying to do at Progressive Congress is to go to the groups and people on the outside, out in the movement, who are working, who are focusing on these issues, uh, and, and get information from the experts that we have to get it into the hands of the members um, in formats that are usable. Um, do you have any examples of things that have been particularly useful or not useful? Um, how important is it that things are, for example, there at the moment when you guys are considering something versus ahead of time? I, I think structurally, actually, I've found um, that the most important thing is, um, as you know, a lot of people have been saying, is the relationship. But um, certain organizations are very good at reaching out to staff and the staff who covers a particular issue. And I mean, I trust my staff more than I trust and I think that's the same for Tom. So, you know, if, if RLA covers energy comes to me and says I have this, you know, these great talking points, I think we should just show them to Tom. I'm a lot more likely to do that than if I get a random call from someone I don't know um, trying to, to feed me energy, you know, policy talking points. Um, so I think actually, you know, I think there's an idea, sometimes, and not always, but sometimes there's an idea that if you talk straight to the member, you're, you know, you're doing the, the best you can do and you're going sort of straight to the vein, but I think that's false and even, you know, someone talking to me, I, I don't have time to be, um, you know, learning about the issue as much as my LA does, so, or my legislative director, so, you know, I would rather that information be digested by the person whose <coughs> expertise area is and, and then have it come to me or, or straight to Tom. Um, so I think that's the way things can be most helpful. And of course, you know, that, that assumes that a relationship has already been set up, but I think that happens, you know, people come to the office, meet with my staff, meet with me, meet with Tom. Um, but, it, you know, it has to start with the relationship, but then, um, I guess to answer your question, you know, things, things coming ahead of time is good, but things are always happening so fast that in a way, you know, it needs to come enough ahead of time that you can digest it, but also not too far ahead that you're like, well, this is just irrelevant this week, so I'm going to put it at the bottom of my pile, and then in three weeks when I clean off my desk, it's going to be irrelevant, and I'll put it in the recycling bin, you know.
know, so it's come some time in the perfect time frame where it's, you know, uh, almost urgent but not quite urgent. I, I would just add to that, Darcy, that to the extent that you're focusing on one or two members, maybe from your home state, getting a sense for the kind of information that that member wants is also important. Different members require different things. For instance, I'm not normally looking to my office for talking points, but I'm always asking them for stats, numbers, and examples. Um, for instance, on the public option fight, what I always wanted was I wanted numbers. I wanted to know um, what degree of concentration the insurance market was there in my state and other states. I wanted to hear about examples of price fixing between large physician groups and uh, large insurance groups. Those are the type of things that I want. And to the extent that you are working with one particular member, um, it's not a bad thing to, to when you're engaging with the staff to say, listen, I think I have access to a lot of really good information on the topic that I care about. What are the types of things that 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 you know Representative X is going to want? And then to sort of make sure that you have those things at your disposal, so that when that staffer gets a call from their member and says, "Hey, I'm going to go talk about healthcare tomorrow, and I desperately want numbers, or I'm going to talk about immigration, and I need a couple good examples of why we have to um, have different policies with guest workers." Um, that if you sort of know what that member needs, you can be a lot more useful to that particular staff. And that's different from, I think, member to member. And the format that it comes in is important, too. We don't have time to wait through all the data. We depend on how often people to wait through it for us on a quick turnaround. So things coming in in digestible bits is more useful than me getting a policy paper that's 20 pages <laughs> Congressman, did you want to try again? Uh, how about now? Yay! Thank <laughs> you. 
the legislative assistant that I have to convince about energy policy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so we have, all of us here, we have that affinity. And so many times the organizations that we build relationships with, let's, let's just use the environmental groups, Defenders, uh, Sierra Club, those, uh, we've built that up over time because we share that affinity. And I, I think that's a key part, that there is a, there's a philosophical affinity that, that we have with each other. And I think that nine times out of ten, I'm going to be seeking out groups that I agree with or agree with me. It's as simple as that. And I think that's how that relationship gets cemented a lot tighter.